Welcome to our third workshop in our Digital Scholar training series. We will focus on approaches and tools to accelerate the dissemination and impact of your research work. Today's goals include to help you understand what types of research outputs you can share and how to use a range of tools for dissemination and audience analysis. This training video provides a brief introduction and the workshop slides give you an overview of the range of tools we explored and discussed during the workshop. Try them online. When I speak with scientists, they often compare talking about their research on digital and social media with self-promotion. And it is important to let go of this mindset. As Mark Kushner puts it, self-promotion is just thinking about yourself. Whereas marketing is trying to understand what other people want and need. Digital and social media provides a huge opportunity for researchers and makes it easier to break out of the traditional science news cycle. So what can you share online to build your online presence and influence? I suggest you share more than your research publications. Consider sharing your research data, including negative results, your software code, presentations, media such as images, video, podcasts, and perspective and thought leadership. The workshop slides show you examples of platforms that you can use to share these different research outputs and formats. So as I mentioned earlier, digital and social media provides a huge opportunity for researchers and makes it easier to break out of the traditional science news cycle, which you see here. In fact, there have never been more tools available that allow scientists to communicate their research proactively. This is your opportunity. So there are a few things to keep in mind when you disseminate your work and research outputs proactively. For example, consider using a spoke hub model approach. The spoke hub distribution model is a system of connections in which all traffic moves along spokes connected to the hub at the center. The hub or center of your distribution strategy could be your lab website or your blog, for example. You will use different channels, such as your researcher profile, data sharing sites, or other social media channels to refer users back to your hub and to increase the traffic to your particular content. By using such an approach, you also increase the chances of being found online through search engines. And all of these components are connected and have a synergistic effect. The workshop slides will show you many examples of tools that you can use to achieve this effect. For a successful digital scholar, it is also important to be aware of guidelines for giving credit and citing online content. This comprehensive guide, published by the American Psychological Association, offers up-to-date information on formatting electronic references. It outlines the key elements and provides a wealth of examples for readers to model for everything from online journal articles to supplemental data sets, videos, apps, websites, social media, and more. You have three options. First, you can use a simple URL, and right here you can see an example of what this could look like. The second option you have is um, you can use a personal communication approach. If you quote specific information from social media, but your readership will be unable to access that particular content, for example, because of privacy settings or because it's a private message, you can cite the content as a personal communication. And again, here's an example that shows you what this could look like. And third, if you quote specific retrievable information from social media, provide an in-text citation and a reference list entry. Again. Here is an interesting example that shows a Twitter message distributed by Bill Gates and the related recommended citation. And the same applies to content published on Google+, for example, or video platforms, as seen in this slide. And finally, a few words about sharing your data more broadly and getting credit for it. The bottom line is to make your data research outputs available in a citable, shareable, and discoverable manner. There are a number of benefits. By doing so, you enhance the visibility of your research, and you also contribute to increasing the efficiency of research due to reusability and exposure. You further enable researchers to ask new research questions and potentially further science. And finally, you enhance collaboration and community building. 
When sharing data, some researchers may ask whether sharing research data publicly is actually considered pre-publication. And the answer is no. In fact, all major journals and publishers welcome research articles reporting analyses and conclusions that are based on previously published data sets. If you decide to share your data online, keep a few things in mind. First, use a platform that allocates a data site DOI, or Digital Object Identifier, at point of publication. Second, store publicly available research outputs under Creative Commons licenses. These copyright licenses give everyone, from individual creators to large companies and institutions, a simple, standardized way to grant copyright permissions to their creative work. The Creative Commons BY license is the most accommodating of licenses offered. It is recommended for maximum dissemination and use of licensed materials. This license lets others distribute, remix, tweak, and build upon your work, even commercially, as long as they credit you for the original creation. And finally, use the CC0 license for datasets and the MIT license for software code. Now it is time for you to try some of the tools that allow you to disseminate your research more broadly. View the workshop slides and contact us if you have any questions.